So after the Ring Ring album, ABBA entered the Eurovision Song Contest again with their song Waterloo. And of course, it became a big international hit and won the song contest. And so they made their second album, which is titled after the Eurovision Song Contest winner. So stay tuned of what I think of this album. me suited in black and I'm once again back with another ABBA review and I know I should have done this before ABBA Voyage because I wanted to build up to ABBA Voyage but I've already explained it why I didn't do it because I was a bit lazy and I'm a bit busy but let's get straight to it. So you probably already know ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1974 with their song Waterloo which became an international hit and started ABBA's career. Or at least it launched them into, you know, the popular kind of um, um, area of um, music. And then they released an album based on that song. And it's got quite a few songs that I feel like are quite underlooked or overlooked and not all that appreciated. So you already know the drill. I'm just going to go through each song individually and just state what I feel about the songs. And then at the end, just just state how I feel about the whole album in general and then as you I've already said this and I think it's now kind of been hammered into your brain if you've watched my other videos but I can only just say this as a fan I am not a music critic at all so why don't we just jump straight into it let's immediately review this album so the first song that appears on this album is of course the titular Waterloo and what else is there to say about the song? It's just, you know, it's one of the classics of ABBA. It's really good. It's really catchy. And as soon as it plays, you just can't help but sing Waterloo. It's just, you know, it's so memorable. And it, when you listen to it, it's like, no wonder this won the Eurovision Song Contest. It's just got so much style to it. And it's really like, you know, this really shows how ABBA were cementing themselves in, in their style and what kind of genre, I mean, what kind of um, approach they did with their music. I also think this is the m first major and popular song by ABBA that combines the sort of familiar Agneta Frida um, vocals together and harmonizes them. And I think that's the more recognizable ABBA. Like, we all know this sound when you hear both singers sing together and harmonize. So I think this is the song that really sort of began to already show what ABBA was like. So if you probably do already guess, but the song's pretty good. I like it a lot. And then the second song on this album is called Sitting in the Palm Tree. And I think it's a... I don't really know how I feel about the song. I think it's a bit... Still kind of... or uh, uh, Not really... Not necessarily unusual. But it's definitely a bit... Not that exciting. And I think in terms of the sort of the Bjorn led um, lead vocal songs, I think this is unfortunately one of the weaker ones. I feel like it's not particularly all that interesting to listen to. There is a moment in the song that has this kind of, you know, recognizable harmony. And, but other than that, it's a bit... Not really all that distinct, if I have to be honest. And then we get to the song King Kong Song. And as a, when I listened to this as a teenager, I thought, this is actually kind of cool. Is, isn't it so different to listen to ABBA and go a bit more rock? Because I think the band was originally supposed to be a rock band. Like, I already said that before with the song Rock and Roll Band. But, I, but King Kong Song, I think it's an interesting ABBA take. It's definitely, it's catchy and it's definitely interesting. And also, you don't really expect, um, you know, the lead, the two, um, you know, Anita and Frida to scream in the song. It's definitely a bit unexpected. And now we have the song Hasta Mañana, and I think this song is beautiful. I really like Hasta Mañana. It's really, you know, beautiful vocals, a nice harmony, good melody, and it's just so pleasant to listen to. I think this is one of the most underappreciated ABBA songs. In terms of just the large scale of people who listen to ABBA, don't know about um, Hasta Mañana. I know a lot of fans do know about like all their, you know, their 
obscure catalog of songs. But I do think Hasta Mañana should be listened to more often. And then we have the song My Mama Said. I think this is actually one of the most unconventional ABBA songs. It's very sort of... I think the style is a bit funk. It's a bit... Not what you'd expect of ABBA again. It's so... I think one of the themes of this album is that they're still trying, but clearly they're starting to understand their style, which I think is really interesting. But My Mama Said is definitely an interesting experiment. Then we have Dance While the Music Still Goes On, and I think, again, just like Hasta Mañana, this is also a really pleasant song to listen to. Anita's vocals are so good, like, they're all, they were always wonderful to listen to. Even in Abba Voyage, I thought she was really amazing with everything she sang in the song, in the album. And Dance While the Music Still Goes On, even as a teen, I was like, this is a good song. I like it. Even though it's... Even the, the While the Music Still Goes On, I think is a bit of an unnecessary thing to see. All you need to see is just dance, and that's it. And then we have the, the I guess, the now more popular song, Honey Honey because of the Mamma Mia movies, but um, I think this is also a really good song. I think it's, I think it's quite sexy because they do the, and I think it's quite unexpected but also really cool, and I think the sort of back and forth between um, I, the, the girls and Bjorn I think is really good. I, I really like it. So Honey Honey is definitely an ABBA song that I think now is more appreciated. And then just like King Kong song, we have the song Watch Out, which is also quite unconventional and definitely not what you'd expect of ABBA and definitely more, slightly more, definitely a more rock vibe though, even if the lyrics are a little bit aggressive to listen to. <laughs> and then the next song I actually don't have much to say about, and that's the song What About Livingston. And there's probably some sort of context to the song I'm not aware of, but other than that, I don't have an opinion on this song. And now we have Gonna Sing You My Love Song, and I think just like Hasta Mañana and just like Dance While the Music Still Goes On, this is a, also another underappreciated song. I think also I Have Been Waiting For You is another one of those really good songs. I think it's now more popular thanks to Mamma Mia too. But, um, so Gonna Sing You My Love Song has beautiful vocals, wonderful vocals from Frida. It's just really you know, pleasant to listen to. Then we have the song I feel a bit mixed on, and that's Susie Hang Around. It's interesting, but I feel like this vocal, the lyrics are slightly mean-hearted. Like, it's about, so, it's about, you know, this girl who just wants to be friends, and all, and the main um, speaker is basically just taunting and making fun of her, and uh, just saying, oh, bugger off. And it's like, okay. <laughs> So the I, I I think the lyrics are a little bit you know not very nice. <laughs> then we have the remix of Ring Ring, the US remix. It's got a bit more of a rock motif, I think, and um, it's a bit, it's far more energetic than the original, which I originally really liked. But other than that, it's just Ring Ring with just a bit more energy to it, and that's all I can really say. And then we both, and then we have Waterloo and Honey Honey in Swedish. And for me, particularly for me personally, it's like the I like these a lot because I think I've said it before, but I'm learning Swedish, and so listening to this stuff just helps. It just helps me learn Swedish. So you know, um, flika lila, and it's like okay, slowly learning more Swedish thanks to this. But other than that, it's just the other songs, but in a different language, and that's kind of it. So overall, what do I think of Waterloo? I have to say it's not my favorite ABBA album. Even, even as a um, as a teen, I was like, I don't really want to listen to this that much. That doesn't mean I hate the album. It's just that I kind of prefer the other albums. Like I've already said, Voulez-vous is my favorite, but Waterloo still absolutely showcases ABBA's where ABBA's um, origins, where they came from, but one thing this album does a bit better, or at least you can see it a bit more in this album compared to Ring Ring, is how their style is starting to form, they're starting to understand what kind of style they want with their music, and it's really obvious from like, you know, Waterloo, 
Honey Honey, Gonna Sing You My Love Song, all that. It's like really nice to just hear them start to, you know, get it together in a way. Just to understand what their style is. It's, it's really interesting in that way. But other than that, it's still not my favorite album. But for all the ABBA albums before ABBA Voyage, I'm not going to actually give a review, a rating, sorry. Because I pre I like all of them, but some a bit more than others. And as a fan, I can't give anyone, like, you know, suited average. Or, um, I know there are some I would give suited best. And that'll do it for my review of Waterloo. So what did you think of Waterloo? Are you a fan of it? Or do you agree with me that it's not quite your cup of tea in the end. So comment down below as usual of what you thought about the album and what you think about my response to this album. Do you agree or do you disagree? So I'm gonna do my my review of the third ABBA album just called ABBA later on probably next week or the week after maybe like in December or at the start of December but look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching my review. Please subscribe for more content on mu music and also books movies, video games, and more. Until we meet again, I'll be waiting.